What's up guys, my name is Liam, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Endgame Gear OP1WE. This is a brand new small shape from Endgame Gear that I've been really enjoying. But, is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. Alright guys, and before we get started today, I did want to let you know that Endgame Gear actually did send this out to me. However, that being said, everything you're going to be hearing in this video today is going to be my own opinions and my own words. Starting out with the box, here's what it looks like from the front. Endgame Gear did an incredible job at providing all the details on here. As you can clearly see, it's got the Kale Optical Go switches in there, TTC Silver Encoder, it lists the side buttons, everything. It does have a 335 milliamp hour battery, and the price of this in the US is going for $89.90. And inside the box, here we got the mouse on the top, and I did opt for it in this white colorway here. Here it is on the top and on the bottom. And then included in the box, they do have a USB-C type cable with a bended connector there on the end. And then it also does come with the USB adapter and the USB receiver as well. And then lastly, they do include these user manuals and you do get an additional skate here. And this is just for the bottom middle ring. As you can see there, it does not come included on the mouse. Starting out over here on the bottom, they do have this kind of unique design. And to be honest with you guys, I really like this a lot. They did leave you access to the screws to be able to get inside into the internals. They are coming out with optional accessories, like they'll be giving different types of optical switches that you can change out to. They'll be providing different skates, grips, and I'll be doing a video on all the accessories later on when they become available. But very basic stuff here, you have the on and off switch. And then over here, you have the DPI button. The skates that do come included, they honestly feel really premium. I was using them on a variety of different types of mouse pads. Even on softer style control pads, I was really trying to push in with the skate design and it felt really stable and solid. But it is cool that they give you a bunch of extra real estate here in case you did want to go for a bigger skate option later down the line. I've seen people online mentioning about their black versions getting fingerprints. You can kind of see them here on the white version, but it's very faint. It's definitely not as obvious. And of course, the coating on this is just incredible. It feels incredibly grippy. There's never a time where I felt like I need any type of additional grips for this or I felt like it was slipping in my hands personally. And then when it comes to mouse buttons one and two, everything feels great. There's literally almost zero pre-travel. Once you do click down, very minimal post-travel. It does get closer to touching the base and you can actually touch it quite a bit if you do hold the mouse at the very front and you do play on the tips of the switches. And I do feel like the click implementation on the OP1WE, it does feel a little bit lighter than it did on my XM2WE. And from front to back, it does get slightly a bit heavier towards the rear and a little bit lighter towards the front, but again, it's pretty consistent throughout. And the same thing over here on mouse button two, almost zero pre-travel, very minimal post-travel, does become more obvious when you get towards the front of the switch. But overall, there's literally almost no play on the left to right. There's almost no rocking left to right. So aside from these switches feeling just a little bit heavier than some of the other offerings out there, the overall implementation I feel like is done and executed really well on here and it feels very premium overall. And I do know of people that actually do prefer heavier clicks. If you are somebody that does prefer lighter clicks, it is really cool. They're gonna be providing the option to upgrade this to lighter switches if you so desire. And then when it comes to the scroll wheel, they are using the TTC silver encoder. It does have nice defined steps on here and it does have a nice center click. Just a little bit heavier on the center click with these TTC silver encoders, but nothing too bad, and it still, for me, is really easy to spam. And for me personally, I kind of like having it a little heavier so it doesn't have accidental clicks because I do like to use my scroll wheel a lot personally. Next up, coming to the side buttons, almost no pre-travel. A little bit of post-travel, but you do hit a nice solid wall in the back there. There's not any play left to right. And same thing on the front, very minimal pre-travel. Just a slight bit of post travel and the side buttons feel incredible and they feel solid. For those of you that watch my channel know I've been testing out a lot of cheaper style mice lately and the build quality of them has been getting really good. But when it comes to something like the OP1WE, this is really the golden standard for build quality. This thing feels absolutely solid. I don't get any type of creaking, flexing, popping, bending. Overall, I really feel like this mouse feels about as premium as it gets. All right, so let's go ahead and drop a click and quality sound check.
And when it comes to the weight and balance, it looks like we have this coming in at approximately 57.9 grams on my scale. And then the front to back balance feels practically perfect just as well as on the left to right balance. The software has been really straightforward and simple to use out of the box. All the settings have been great. It did come with a three millisecond to balance setting. So you can drop that down to zero if you want the lowest click latency possible. Aside from that coming over the second page, all I had to do is swap my DPI settings to my preferred 3200 DPI. And then everything else on here looks good, comes to the thousand hertz polling rate. And this does not give you an option to disable motion sync in the software. And the performance while using this in game is felt absolutely incredible. From the second I started using it, I fell in love with the shape and it's been performing greatly for me. I feel like this was done very nice. It has very smooth curves. Nothing on the design of this feels too aggressive to me. It feels very natural in the hands. And one thing that I really feel like they got right with the rear hump is I don't feel like the rear hump sits too aggressively or too pronounced. It definitely is there and it gives you a lot of stability in your aim. It does feel very soft and natural in the hands when you grip this thing. Even coming from the bottom of the mouse to the top, it feels pretty flat overall. And whether I was trying any type of grip on this, it is a little bit of a smaller mouse, but it is kind of longer, so a little more narrow there. If I was trying to palm it, I felt like if you do have smaller hands, you can absolutely make this work for a palm and it feels great. Works incredibly for a relaxed claw grip from the mid rear of the mouse. I was using it with fingertip grip. Since it does have such high flat sides, I really feel like this is an incredible option to use for fingertip grip. And even if you were to grip this mouse towards the front, I just feel like there's so much real estate there for your fingers. And while I was trying it with a bunch of different grip styles, I really feel like the shape does a great job at accommodating just about any type of grip style out there, depending on your hand size. Overall, the shape has been incredibly comfortable to use, and I would say it's definitely one of my top shapes that's out there on the market right now. All right, so first up, when comparing it to the XM2WE. So just to be clear, starting out, the OP1WE is not an XM2WE Mini. It's actually a shape of its own. As you can clearly see from the top of these, the XM2WE sits much wider at the top and the XM2W also has more aggressive curves going from the bottom of the mouse up to the top where the OP1W definitely feels a lot more flat on the sides. And coming over to the bottom is where you can definitely see the OP1W is much more of a narrow style of a mouse. The XM2W has way more aggressive curves going from the middle flaring out more towards the front and more out towards the rear where you just kind of have this smooth gradual curve on the OP1WE and it kind of just feels a little bit flatter towards the front. It does flare out towards the front, but it's very minimal. The XM2WE is much wider. And then finally coming over the sides is where you can clearly see that the XM2WE just feels like a larger mouse with more aggressive curves. All right, and next up when comparing it to the Vaxi NP01S. A lot of people out there really like to compare these two to one another. And as you can clearly see here, they do have a lot of similarities. In the hands, both of these mice kind of have that longer, more narrow filling profile. They both have their buttons more centered towards the front here. If I were to stack these two together and I were to feel the most narrow center point, it's honestly just about even where it meets in the most narrow point of these mice. But coming over the bottom, as you can clearly see, this has more of that ergo style bottom where it does feel a lot wider over here on the right side. And the curve over here on the left does feel a lot more aggressive as well on your thumb. So if you're looking for something a little more safe, then I do kind of feel like the shape on the OP1WE. I feel like the curves are a little bit less aggressive and it does feel just a little bit more natural in the hands to me. Coming over to the back on the rear profile, I do feel like at the top of the mouse, the NP01S just feels just a little bit wider, but as you can see here, the overall profile of these isn't that far apart from one another. And then finally, looking at these both on the side, as you can see, the NP01S feels like a much flatter mouse at the top where you do have more height and you have more of a rear hump support with the OP1WE. And though I love both of these mice, I think they're incredible. I would absolutely have to say, personally, my opinion is that the OP1WE absolutely takes the cake on this one for me.
All right, and next up, we we'll compare it to the Lamzu Atlantis Mini. When it comes to the top profile, both of these, the Atlantis Mini does feel like a bit more of a wider mouse at the top. And the two biggest differences between these, I would say, is that the Atlantis Mini definitely has way more aggressive curves from the middle, most narrow point, flaring out more aggressively, getting wider towards the rear and towards the front. And if I were to stack them together like this and fill the most narrow center point, they honestly feel just about as wide as one another. Down here at the very bottom, the Atlantis Mini might just be just a hair more narrow, but coming over the front, they don't look that far off from one another. But another big difference is, again, at the bottom profile of the OP1WE, flaring out towards the top, it's a lot flatter feeling where you do have way more aggressive curves from the bottom of the Atlantis Mini flaring out way more aggressively towards the top. So in the hands, the OP1WE does feel like a much more narrow mouse at the top, whereas the Lambs Atlantis Mini feels wider. One thing that I love so much about the Lambs Atlantis Mini is it does have a really soft rear curve, so it gives you stability, but it doesn't feel too aggressive. And I do kind of get those same vibes coming off of the OP1WE. So from the side profile, as you can see, they don't have really too aggressive of a rear hump. And the overall height of them, they're pretty similar to one another. All right, next up, I'm comparing it to the Pulsar X2 Mini. Two of the most notable differences between these for me, as you can clearly see here on the bottom, the X2 Mini feels like it's flatter and it does have a wider profile. And when you come over here to the rear profile, there's not too much of a difference of the overall width of these when it comes to the rear hump. But I do feel like on the X2 Mini, it does feel a little bit more pointy and just a little bit more aggressive. I do feel like there's a little bit more height on the OP1WE and it sticks up just a little bit higher. Next up when comparing it to the Ninjutsu Sora. The Sora does feel like a little bit of a larger mouse. As you can see here, it does have more aggressive curves on the side, flaring out more towards the front and the rear. But overall, it just feels a little bit more wide, even in the centermost narrow point here. And then same thing when you look at it from the rear here, I do feel like the rear hump, it does sit a little bit wider at the top of the mouse. It kind of has this little bit more aggressive curves from the bottom of the mouse to the top to run the OP1WE. It feels a little bit flatter from bottom to top, but getting wider at the top there, you can clearly see that all around, not only does it feel wider at the bottom, it feels a bit wider at the top. And due to the sore feeling, it's a little bit larger. I do feel like here in the rear as well, it does have have a bit more of an aggressive rear hump. Next up, comparing to the Dharma Shark M3S Varun. I would say the biggest difference between these two is that the Varun definitely does feel like a bit more of a medium sized mouse, where the OP1WE does feel just a little bit smaller. As you can see there, it's definitely wider on the sides, but the curve profile isn't that far off. It does have really light curves from the rear back up towards the front. And then coming over here to the rear, same thing. The bottom does feel a little bit more of a medium sized mouse. And over here at the top, it does feel a little bit taller and bigger in the hands as well. Finally, coming over here to the side, as you can see here, this kind of has a softer profile on the curve from front to back. Just kind of fills up your hands a little bit more to where this kind of drops off more aggressively towards the front and the rear. Just overall, just feeling a bit smaller.
All right, and last but not least, comparing it to the Cooler Master MM712. I've been getting requests to compare these two to one another, and as you can clearly see, the differences between these are pretty clear. The MM712 just feels like a much wider mouse in the hands. It does have more aggressive curves on the side, and coming over here to the rear top profile, as you can see there, that rear hump, it definitely feels a lot wider in the hands. And finally, looking at these from the side, as you can see here, the MM712, it does have a much more aggressive hump. It fills up your hands a lot more, and again, it just feels a lot wider. All right guys, so that wraps things up on the Endgame Gear OP1WE. Just as with many others, I've been a huge fan of their very first mouse all the way leading up to the wireless version, the XM2WE. I feel like it's great, and I really feel like they hit it out of the park with the overall shape of this. If you are in the market for a rear hump mouse and you've tried any of the other options that I've compared to this, and you felt like the curves are too aggressive or too flat or whatever, and you feel like this would definitely kind of fall in line with what you're looking for, I do feel like overall this has been an incredible shape and a great mouse to use. All right guys, so if you have any questions I feel like I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. Aside from that, if you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I've left affiliate links down in the description below for some of the mice that I featured in this video today if you're interested in picking any of them up and supporting the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.